This is going to be your guide for using Isabelle in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So this video is going to cover Isabelle's moveset, basic combos, KO ranges, as well as other tips and tricks for using this crazy character, because anyone that's played with or against Isabel has quickly realized that her fishing rod is really busted. We're going to talk about that in a bit, but also, she has a lot of weaknesses. I kind of classify her as a 50-50 character. She has like 50% really, really good options, but then the other half of the time, she's kind of getting exploited and abused a lot, so that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, how to play to your strengths and avoid those weaknesses. So if at any point in this video you feel like you're learning something, don't forget to leave a like, share with all your friends, I'm here to help because I'm an Isabel main and there's a lot of really cool stuff. So now let's get into the moveset. Uh, let's start off with her dash, because it's going to be a basic thing that you're really going to rely on. The dash is pretty crazy, because it keeps you safe by throwing out a projectile that has a pretty solid range into the opponent, and it does a good amount of damage. Now, the interesting thing is, depending on how close you are to the, to the opponent, you're going to be doing more damage. So this hit right here, that's going to be doing 12. 12%, like that, but if it's going to be a further hit, like at the edge, that's just going to be 7.2%. So that's going to be a dash. As for the uh, neutral attack, it's a really weird thing because it comes out quick and it can stop your opponent from doing a lot of things but you can't really act out of it until it's done and if you mash anything you're just going to keep using that neutral hit so i'm like oh neutral into grab no you can't you can't do it you know you buffer into the next hit i'm hitting the grab button right now and yeah so as you can see there there it finally goes so you kind of have to like hit them and then catch them at the perfect time into your next option there's a few other things that you can do so as you stop hitting them that's going to make it to where there's like less chance that you're buffering into it so you know you hit them away and then you just mash uh, a down and then that's going to give you a nice little pull when they don't really have too many things you can do so that's kind of something that combos into it at reasonable percents and stuff like that uh, your side tilt so this is going to be one of Isabel's strongest moves because it has pretty solid range it's quick and it has a lot of knockback, and it's just pretty strong overall. So one thing is, I use Tilt Stick, you know, C-Stick, you uh, go into the configuration for your controller, and they change it to where C-Stick on GameCube controller is a tilt attack, and that gives you a lot of cool movement options, because if you press back really quick and then go into the tilt, you're actually going to be able to carry that momentum and slide a bit, if you noticed right there. So as you get really good with it, uh, you just kind of get a little bit of extra range on this already really crazy move. And the thing is, you have to do it quick. Like, the second you go back, you have to start to use that tilt stick so you still keep that momentum, and then you slide out. So that's going to be something that gets really powerful in the higher percents, and if you just need to clutch out a KO, you can find it. Now, her up tilt is a really good combo starter at low percentages. I have the high percentages for, like, later stuff, but we'll talk about the combos here uh, in a bit. But yeah, like, uh, at low percentages, you can juggle characters with it. It's also, like, a really nice option of getting people away from you if they're doing something. It's just better than your up smash when it comes, like, covering something and getting someone off of you. So it also starts from behind, which means that it's going to be quicker if you're facing away from them. So effectively, you can do the same thing, where you do a turnaround really quick, and then you, like, do the tilt stick thing, but instead you do it with the up tilt. And that's going to be super fast, catches at the early part of the hitbox, and then knocks them up. And then that's when you can go follow up with your aerials and all the wacky things you can do with Isabel. Uh, down tilt. As we just kind of saw, down tilt has a surprisingly deceptive range. Like, look at that. You can hit them from two meters or so away, and it actually has really good knockback. You know, at about 125, 130%, that can start KOing people. So this is a good option if you, like, desperately need a KO right at the end, or if something else is happening, and that's going to effectively be the tilt for Isabel. Smashes. Um, down smash is really wild, because it's quick, but it has a very short range. So it's kind of like a much faster villager that just goes straight into damage potential, and it can KO opponents at a reasonable range, because it sends them at a pretty low angle. So if they're at a high enough percent near the ledge and you just throw it out there, you can KO them outright, or it'll put them like near the bottom, you know, like down here where their recovery option might not be good enough to save them. So that's going to be something nice, and yeah, it is, it is kind of quick. Unfortunately, the, it's, it's almost too quick, you know, that front comes out and then she rushes around really fast. So because of that, you can't really use it to like predict and then stop an opponent's attack like you can with some uh, double hitting or like backwards down smashes and stuff like that. Her up smash. Oh man, her up smash is wild because it KOs at around 100% on a lot of characters, but it's it's really tricky to use. You know, it takes a little bit of time, so there's a good amount of wind-up. It doesn't cover behind you, and it has a very, very small usable range. So yeah, it just comes up, and then sometimes it sucks them in, depending on where their big toe is. Has I think it has two hitboxes, like the first one into the second one, so that way they get juggled into it. And it can work for some kind of like early combos if it comes out, but it's really risky to do. It's, it's also really hard to land. 
and it doesn't really cover too much because of the way the hitbox works. Like, once it comes out like that, it doesn't linger for too long, so you can still get abused from an aerial option or just someone running in and then attacking you off of it. Her side smash. So, her forward smash is going to just be absurd. Like, this thing KOs at, like, 80%, depending on the character. Like, if they finish at 90%, likely that was a KO from middle middle stage and stuff like that. So, actually, that was a little... I charged that one a little more, but, um, you can just see that, boom, wreck him, does a lot of damage. Naturally, DI and stuff like that is going to come into play, but it, it actually has a lot of punish potential, and if you catch someone... Like, the idea is what you want to do is you want to use uh, Isabel's good aerial movement. So, this is one of those little tips and advice tricks things I'm going to be sprinkling through the video. So, as you can see, Isabel has, like, a lot of control in air, so you can use it to kind of space people out, and also that works with your aerials as we get into those. So, what you want to do is you kind of want to bait people and then go straight into a smash as you land. If they whiff their attack or they're late on it, you're going to have a really powerful option that can KO them at very early percents. Like, this is Isabel's earliest finishing move besides a so that's something that you need to keep in mind, but at the same time its range is very tiny like and it also it doesn't really cover low either so you can't use it to like camp someone at the edge because it just doesn't aim down it has a very specific hitbox where it points and then it does a lot of crazy stuff from there uh, good trajectory good angle good damage insane knockback but you're gonna find that it, it doesn't beat out much and it's kind of slow you know there's that, that's as fast as it goes. That's the charge up right there. So you have to be really predictive with it, which means your opponent can read that and play around it. But if it lands, it is nuts. All right, so let's talk about special moves now. Being a villager archetype, Isabel's neutral special is going to be Pocket. It gives you invincibility frames while you use it, so it can also be used for more than just grabbing projectiles, and that's what it does. It takes an opponent's projectile, and then it puts it right there in your pocket. So if the projectile can be held, like an item or certain projectiles from other characters, you can uh, use Pocket again to grab that item, and then you can use A to throw it like a regular projectile, or if it's something special like a laser or other projectile, you immediately throw it when you use Pocket again. Again, this gives you more damage and more knockback, and for a lot more powerful moves, it can find some very, very early KOs. You can use this to grab a Samus charge shot, and then just completely wreck the, the Samus at like mid-high-ish percent. Now, since it's a neutral special move, it has a lot of unique properties that you can use to your advantage for tech and movement options. So there's a thing called a B-reverse. Press the B button, but then you also press the opposite direction really quick, you'll turn around and you can use it. So you can use this to grab the items. Now, since Pocket does work from behind, it's not absolutely needed, and this can work in the air as well. But the timing, you have to be really good at it, so that way you don't accidentally like, turn around and stuff. And what this also does is it gives you a B reverse while you're dashing, and you can use it to jump back and then get a lot of crazy stuff like this. So if the opponent is like jumping in the air to spam projectiles, which like a lot of uh, Young Link will do, or some other characters as they're trying to cover multiple height options, you can like short hop into a. Um, it's pretty tricky to do because like the short hop is it's kind of challenging, and then you have to like hit it really hard and then go fast and then not use your fishing pole. So it takes a little bit of time to do. But yeah, if you can do something like that. Once you get into the rhythm for it. So you can just kind of add this into like your kit of shenanigans to make you a bit more unpredictable. Have a lot of extra movement options in the air that gives you a lot of distance. And it just covers against projectiles. Now here's my biggest advice for Pocket. Don't get tilted if you don't catch every projectile that the opponent uses. There's also a lot of vulnerability to Pocket. That if you get hit while you're putting the item in your Pocket and it has knockback, well then you actually lose that item. So say you're going up against a young Link. Throws out a boomerang, you grab the boomerang, but then an arrow hits you at that second. Well, you lose the boomerang, and then you just took arrow damage. And some characters, they just have so many projectiles that you can't grab them all. So try to plan it opportunistically. You know, you're not always going to be able to read the opponent. The opponent's going to be unpredictable. Especially even if it's something like a wolf laser, a fox laser. Like, the fox laser, since it doesn't have knockback, you're just better off trying to hit him out of it. Um, so a lot of these, like, weird projectiles in the game, you're going to notice that there's some that are better to catch than others, like the charge shots. Samus charges up a shot, well then you just have to read and predict it. And if they do a power shot beforehand, you, you power shot, you shield the charge shot, and then you throw the power shot back, and that'll KO them at, like, 80-90%, because you're getting all that buff damage and stuff. So that's the thing about it. Also, if you kind of use this for the movement options, you know, when you land, you just go straight into a tilt. So I was able to hop over Fox, have invulnerability while doing so, and then when I landed, I had an attack waiting for him. So that's going to be neutral special. Pocket has a lot of tech and a lot of crazy stuff behind it. Time for the fishing rod, guys. Fishing rod's dumb. That's 16% right there, and it starts getting to, like, 20% and stuff. And also, like, the damage feels inconsistent in, like, a weird way. It just kind of, like, does various amounts of damage. I haven't really figured out. But you can also, like, manipulate how far it goes. So if you do a short hop into it, into it like that, you're able to throw it 6 meters. Like, look at that. We're able to make it all the way over here. But if we don't, we fall just ever so slightly short with it. So that's something to notice, and if you do a full hop, it reaches the max, and then it kind of bounces back a bit. So, a well-timed short hop that 
into it is going to be like the most ideal and then giving you insane range so if you're getting outfished by another isbel it's probably because they're doing something like that because you're just going to be right below them now the fishing rod is command grab so you can use it throw them into things and you can also use this off the ledge so if you go off ledge grab someone throw them back behind you into something like battlefield they bounce off the bottom of the stage and they get gimped and they die like that now what makes the fishing rod scary is that say you miss well you can pull people in on the real end and it also works the other way around so say someone's dashing in at you so you got the fishing rod right there someone's dashing in boom you press the a button you pull in now i'm playing with the fishing rod you can just throw it over stuff and try to grab people or at least like eliminate their options okay so with that out of the way let's talk about isabelle's recovery balloons are overpowered that if you don't get directly smashed out of the zone you can make it back to the ledge however there is a limit that eventually you run out of gas you run out of balloons depending on how many times you've used it consecutively and then after a decent amount of time the balloons will start to recharge but for the most part like that's gonna be it however there is a lot of vulnerability that if you're you know way out here and you're trying to drift back on in you can just get smashed off you know they just do like a back air they can spike you you're very vulnerable while that happens so but you can use this to your advantage because like okay you can kind of stall it out a bit and then you can like rush back up and or you can just like go really fast or really slow so you can ride up at different speeds and you can use that to try to bait out games especially like under battlefield and you know try to you can play mix-ups and have a decent chance now the problem with uh, Isabel's balloon trip is that if you stop it's really hard to get that momentum back so that's where you can lo lose a lot so you can't stall out you have to like kind of commit and going all the way to it this is different from villager and super smash bros 4 to where you can like stop and then get everything back and then just like kind of do some things also probably seen this before and to add it into your mix-up depending on like how you're getting like ledge trapped and ledge camped uh, depending on how you're getting ledge trapped and ledge camp, you can jump under the stage, use your double jump, and then you can easily make it under ledge, just like that. So that's going to be the uh, B up. So it's it's really good, but it isn't an option. Like, you know, you don't have a damage option. You can't B up out of shield and then keep someone off you or go into like some kind of crazy B up combo that KOs. Don't have that on Isabelle, but that's your trade-off for having an ungimpable recovery. As for our down special, we have our Lloyd Rocket. Lloyd Rocket, it's a landmine. They walk over it, they blow up, and then they die at around 140%. But there's a lot of nuances to this. So the thing is, if there's a fast character, they can just like straight run through it, no problems. So you need to stop on it, or you need to trigger it yourself. So you don't have to like water it and then start chopping it down. You just kind of throw it out there and then you can activate whenever. So if the opponent tries to jump over it, well then you can catch them in that. Problem is, this rocket takes a bit of time to set up, so an opponent can, you know, use a projectile to knock you out of it or just rush you down before it lands. And then they can also do a lot of things to disarm it. Sword characters, projectiles, some attacks stop it, some don't. Uh, also, what you can do is you can kind of stand in front of it and camp it. So if they try to, like, dash attack you through it, that's not going to happen. But some characters, their dash attack naturally sets it off. Some don't. Some just break it. It's it's something that you have to be very attentive of. And it's not something that I recommend spamming. You know, sometimes, like, I'll knock someone off the ledge instead of going for Gimp. I try to play these mind games, like, oh, I'm going to set that up. I'm going to Fishing Rod. It can be used for, like, some interesting utility, but if you over-rely on it, it can be problematic. However, if an opponent just keeps walking into it, or if their character is weak to the Lloyd, and you discover that, like, just through a lot of matchups and stuff, then you can use the, the Lloyd quite frequently, and you can just kind of tilt them off of that. Uh, it's like you play this wild neutral game where you're throwing out, like, fishing hooks and stuff. Trying to throw them into Lloyd isn't really that big, but you can, you can find some really weird stuff that happens. Also, you can, like, rush it down and, like, try to hit them up as it's going. So the Lloyd has some pretty interesting interactions. Then last up, we have a grab, or not even last, like, uh, we have a grab and then aerial. So grab, very slow, but very powerful. Back throw at 120% near the ledge, that's going to be a KO. 130, 140%. Like, if you have no other option and nothing else is sticking, and you can just, like, run up and grab and KO them, that's something that you can do pretty quickly. But the thing is, Isabel and Villager, they have one of the slowest grabs in the game. So... A character can smash and then grab you while yours is like still coming in depending on their recovery frames so it's it's really hard it's not as good a uh, dash grab you know you're just gonna lose out like someone could be standing still you're trying to get that extra range on dash grab and they're just going to grab you out of it so you have to be really really smart and tricky about using it and then we have the projectiles so again villager archetype and that is where we have the slingshot and very powerful neutral neutral comes out quick keeps people off you has decent knockback used to gimp at people on the ledge used to do some stuff like that and it's a combo starter or at least like something you can integrate in your combo as you're chasing people down as you're getting all this air control and you can kind of spam it quite well uh the not that not the fishing rod the projectiles so slingshot um yeah you have to like you can't just use it like this you know 
what you can do is you can do a jump and an attack at the same time, and that gives you the short hop attack that you're looking for. But you can't really do that with slingshot. You don't get a free short hop slingshot or anything like that. Um, even the backwards one, it just goes over most characters' heads. Now, a lot of heavies can get juggled by this, and you can use it that way. But uh, you have to like kind of like either full hop to cover or short hop, wait a little bit, then hit them, or you have to like catch them at the edge of it. But the thing is, Slingshot does more damage the closer you are, and also has a lot more knockback. So, Backward Slingshot is nasty. Uh, backward Slingshot is more damage, more knockback. So, what you want to do is you kind of want to be facing away from your opponent, and then you want to just, like, keep turning it around like that, and then get your timings right. And that's where a lot of the practice is going to come in. Another thing is you don't want to bait yourself. Like, it might be like, oh, hey, look at this, I have all these projectiles, so I'm just going to keep throwing out projectiles and spacing it and running away and stuff like that. But no, it's, it's better to just, like press your opponent with really well-timed ones instead of just throwing spam out there because they're going to find a way through. That's going to be pretty bad for you. But uh, yeah, if you do like a do a full hop, if you do the right full hop, you can end up getting two and that kind of covers high and low or you can like do a short hop into low followed up with all the other projectile spam and that's kind of like what makes Villager so frustrating to play against or a Villager kind of character because you're just throwing out projectiles, they try to get it on you, just move, use more projectiles to keep them off. Isabel, instead of having the Lloyd Rocket, can just use the Fishing Rod, so they can either, like, go over and pull someone in, just hit them directly while they're creating a lot of spam. So that's, uh, that's gonna be it. Like, it's gonna be one of your bread and butter. This is, like, combo continuation. You hit them onto a ledge, you wanna, like, short hop, land, quickly get up, land, throw out some more projectiles. As the game is, like, evolving and things are going on, you really want that to be what you're using. Up air and down air are effectively the same thing. We have turnips. Uh, it seems to come out quite a bit slower than villagers, but it has like a really good uh, potential to spike people. It isn't like the triple turnip spike, but at higher percentages, this just sends them straight down and they're done. Or you can use this as KO for um, higher percentages. So yeah, you knock them up, boom, just like that, dead. So you can be really fast on this, you know, as you're jumping up, you use that to just go and take things out, and it's pretty decent. Like, depending on when you get it out, if you catch the hitbox just right and you get the timing, you can beat out, like, a, a good amount of down airs, but a lot of sword characters, they'll beat you on the, um... Like, if you're using a down A, and they're coming up and trying to use their up A, that's that's not gonna work, you know? So, some like, sometimes you just have to give it up, but other times when you find it, it works out really well. Another really interesting thing about the turnips is, depending on the percent, it, if it doesn't if it doesn't knock them up, so in like the mid percent ranges, let's go find something like eh, like 76. Let's see what that oh, let's see what that does. So see, it knocks them down, has a lot of good air knockback, and then you can follow that up with a smash or something like that. Thing is, turnips are not safe on shield. I cannot count the thousands of times I've like run into someone with turnips to try to get them into some kind of like ground lock stun combo with it, and then they just shield grab me out of it. So not safe on shield, not safe on a lot of things. But if you find the opportunity on punish or something like that, boom dead so that's that's what makes it really disgusting and that's when you can do the you know the short hop where you just press the attack and the uh, jump button at the same time so you can do that and that works out pretty well um on that it's also like a short hop into turnips is your only real option for catching someone on a ledge because this is dumb this is just dumb to me isabel doesn't reach it villager reaches it isabel doesn't reach it so you have to do yeah, and you can't even, like, short hop like that, that. So this is, like, the only way you can catch someone off the ledge like that. Unless you're also, like I said, playing those uh, fishing rod games from earlier. Trying to do some things like that. So that's pretty much going to be uh, Isabel's moveset and how things work. So let's talk about some of the basic combos. Alright, disclaimer about combos. Of course, I know that doing something in training mode means that it's not going to be successful 100% of the time. You know, there's not, like, a lot of guaranteed, true, ultimate, ultra combos and stuff. But these are basics that are going to work in a lot of scenarios, depending on the percent and stuff like that. So, the short hop neutral, um, you need to, like, use it, then neutral, auto cancel, up tilt, up tilt, and then tech chase. So, the tech chase, chase gives you a few options. You can jump, like, full hop jump into a neutral air. You can use turnips, or you can, like, space it, and then depending on which direction they're going, that's when you throw out a slingshot. But this is going to work pretty well. Now, this is where also this is also where things get a little wild. Because you might see a combo that looks like this from time to time. Short hop neutral, turnips, tilt, tilt, whatever. Uh, that's pretty ridiculous, but it only works against a couple of characters. Also, it's a lot harder than you think just kind of, like, you know, on someone that's moving, on a li living, breathing person that you have to predict. You know, coming in with the neutral and then catching them and making sure everything lines up perfectly. You know, turps can miss, they can get knocked back, they might be in an awkward position, you might not be able to, like, catch it just right. But as you can see right there, you can also get some really weird auto cancels depending on, like, how far you're coming in, which part of the hitbox hits them, stuff like that, and then you can also just follow it up. So, same things work, and then it's just all about the chase, getting that aerial, keeping them off, mixing in the tilts and making it work. So that's gonna be pretty powerful, but a tall character, like Captain Falcon, is the only one that neutral into turnips works. 
But the thing is, like, you actually get both of those out, so that works out pretty well. And depending on, like, how I said, like, you know, if the hit delays them, it auto cancels pretty well, and then you're already holding up, so you get a free tilt, stuff like that. Uh, the juggling on some heavy characters is kind of wacky, too. Heavy characters are just tilts for days, and you don't even have to start it with some kind of aerial combo. Like I said, you do that reverse, you come in and tilt, and then you just buffer into it, and you can juggle them for a very long time, and then they can start to get out of it. So that's gonna be something. Also, just like, they're a big target. This is when you can just kind of keep pummeling them with attacks like that. Now, obviously, being that close in their face isn't going to work, but shows that, you know, you can space them, and then eventually, uh, some characters like K. Roll up, they're just like really dense and have that power armor stuff going on. Donkey Kong, Ridley, those are characters that are really just naturally easier to ju juggle. But, uh, like, once you start getting them to where they are taking knockback, they are taking stuff, you can just kind of, like, keep keep on them and then maybe land, like, a triple slingshot combo. And then lastly, when it just comes to, like, overall combos for Isabel, it's about adapting. Because you have a lot of, like, really interesting combo stars. Like, okay, cool, I just potted into that for some percentages. Uh, if you knock them up and then they're, like, running around and you can just kind of keep hitting them. That's that's what it takes to be a good villager player. That's what it takes to be a good Isabel player. Um, naturally, like, fast-falling characters and characters that aren't as heavy or, like, have smaller hitboxes, they're gonna be harder to hit, but it doesn't make it impossible. If you're throwing out the right moves against the right characters, you're just gonna be able to kind of continue a combo as you're falling around, because you have so many projectiles, you have so much range, you have some really interesting things, like, you know, if you're in the middle of a combo and then you get that turnip knockdown into a smash or a tilt, and then you can just, like, follow that up, so boom, you can do something like that. Keep them off. As they're away, you know, you pressure them with the, uh, slingshots a bit more, that's when you can also go throw in something like the fishing rod, and then they just take a ton of damage really quick. So, Isabel also has, like, some different options of Villager, because Villager, it, it's death by a thousand cuts. Isabel does more damage in a closer range, so it is a bit less safe, but then, you know, at any point, land a fishing rod, get 20% on the opponent, if you get some kind of follow-up, or, you know, they walk into a Lloyd, another 20% right there, as they're coming down, you tag them, uh, you just get that random 12, 13% off of the, um, off of the, uh, dash move, and then you just get another 20% by hitting them with neutrals and aerial moves like that. Also, you know, the platforms are your friends, you can just kind of extend, get your jumps back, do some weird stuff. So that's pretty much Isabel, guys. Um, she has a lot of cool things that happen. The KO ranges, they're pretty high-end, but you can kind of stack damage onto the opponent really easily. And then off-ledge, she is pretty nuts, you know, you back back air into someone trying to recover, you just like neutral, like her neutral isn't as good as villagers for gimping because it does have some knockback, so you can neutral into a stage bounce, just kind of chase off, uh, do something like that, either use your slingshot, use your turnips, just kind of like hurt people off the ledge, I feel that's better than trying to like go for a ledge trap, because villager, like not villager, Isabel has like some interesting ledge trapping options by like, you know, setting out the fishing rod, maybe planting a Lloyd, pressuring with some of her other options, like if they, if they're coming in and they somehow manage to eat your down smash, their trajectory is going down and they are going to have pretty much no chance of getting back. But I'd rather just, like, you know, contest people off stage because you have such a good recovery that you can manage to do that. Say they smash you, you smash them, and you're both flying. That's when, like, okay, you try to, like, come in on a weird fishing rod or the circumstances of whatever hit. You know, you have to be very fluid when you play Isabel, but there's a lot of adaption or adaptation that can work out pretty well. And then you just have to know what's going to KO when, try to fish for it, literally, and then you're just going to find things. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.